I'm delighted to say I'm joined live in the studio by the leader of Reform UK, Richard Tice. Thank you for coming in. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Why is there a need for reform? What's its purpose? Uh, its purpose is to give voters a serious alternative choice as to how they think the country should be run and governed and managed. And what we've got in the main two parties is two forms of socialism. The highest taxes for 70 years, the highest, very often, sadly, wasteful government spending, nanny state regulations, mass immigration that no one voted for, and net zero that's costing the country tens and tens of billions every single year. Again, that no one's had a proper debate and vote for. So we offer a serious alternative. And the reason that we're going up in the polls is because actually, sadly, people are feeling poorer and colder, and they're not happy with uh, with w the main two options. In what sense are you serious? You're not going to win power. We're deadly serious. Democracy is all about giving voters options. Otherwise, you say you might as well live in a dictatorship, and none of us are advocating that, for heaven's sake. No, you can, um, and, you can and be an alternative. Would, would, you're our, just not our, real preference, our real preference, of course, is proportional representation, which is much fairer. But we are where we are. No one's saying it's easy, Tom. But here's the thing. Yes, it's tough on the way up, but it's also brutal for the Tories on the way down. And their poll ratings are sinking. Ours are going up. And who knows what will happen if this trend continues when we get to the late summer, if we haven't already had a, an election called for, for the summer. You say that you're going to stand a candidate in every seat. From the Electoral Register or the Electoral Commission, I can see that you have 18 million quid in donations. That's not enough to stand a candidate in every seat. It's an empty threat. You're Eight, not going to do so that. We, um, we'd love to have 18 million pounds in donations. Even, no, we, we know that, that, oh, and nowhere um, near it. No, no, Fantastic. No, no. But actually, yeah, but that's the point. Uh, we can run a very cost-effective machine. We've got over 400 candidates already. We've got another 300 going through the process. So we will be standing candidates in every single seat in England, Scotland and Wales. And I'm confident of that. And that's, that's, the, a promise. That, that's, that, that's a promise. I could even have a, uh, a pint of Guinness Zero with you, Tom, on, on whether or not we hit it. <laughs> that's the bet, a pint of Guinness Zero. Um, Lee Anderson, who is perhaps the most high-profile Tory to defect to reform, he's the only Tory to have defected to reform so far, says he wants his country back. What's he talking about? Uh, exactly. I'll tell you what he's talking about. He's talking about getting our country back from the weak, wet, woke liberal establishment that have ruined the country. The people in the Treasury with their failed economic models, the Bank of England who's failed over quantitative easing, uh, the people at the OBR with their failed forecasting. Uh, these people, they all said they got it right. The people who suggested that mass immigration was going to help us. Hang on. No, you the, OBR. The, the, the point is, we're in the longest recession per person since records began 70 years ago. And yet we were told that actually uh, the economy is going to grow. It's not growing. What do you mean recession per person? What do you mean? So, there's, there's, right, GDP per person, per, right, capita, yeah. per capita, per head, uh -huh. right, that is in its longest recession. We're in recession for eight quarters in a row. That's the longest since records began. That's the reason why people are so cross at the moment, understandably, because everybody's getting poorer. So Lee Anderson wants his country, his rich country back. Well, what we want is a country that's properly run, well run, like in the 80s and 90s when the country was growing at 25 to 3.5% per year. Now we've got a Chancellor of the Exchequer that seems to get excited if it grows about 0.2% about a year. That's not growth. That's frankly pathetic. It's also that, not what he's talking about, is it? It's exactly what he's talking no, about. No, what he's talking no, about it, is... No, it's exactly what, what he's talking about is the fact that there were signs welcoming Ramadan in London. That's what he's talking about. Absolute nonsense. What we're talking about is a country that works, and it doesn't work for people up and down the country, for his constituents and for the for people up all over the place and that's why we're going up in the polls because people are saying something's wrong we've been told by these two main parties that actually we're all going to be better off but we're not we're worse off and that's why the Tories are sinking in the polls fruitcakes loonies and closet racists David Cameron called UKIPers is that not an apt description of reform uh, well, we're not UKIP, we're completely different. And it's interesting, you talk about candidates, just literally walking here, I see that the, uh, sorry, that the Labour Party mm. have had a candidate suspended for uh, alleged racism. So look, every party you know, has their hiccups with candidates. Uh, vetting is an important process, we do it. The great thing that is about us is that we will get yes. rid of candidates that fail faster than anybody else. Look, I'm glad you mentioned candidates. Why have you told your candidates not to have a glass of wine before tweeting? It was pretty obvious because otherwise, frankly, you know, if you're going to enjoy a glass of wine, stick to the glass of wine. You know, don't go on social media because you'll 
the chances are you'll do something daft, which, you know, it's just, that's what happens. It's the same for any party. Any party is, is frankly, it's good common sense advice. How many that's glasses of wine common had your sense candidate policies? in South Ribble had when he says, Muslims never coexist with others, that Africans have low IQs and Sadiq Khan is a far left Muslim supremacist supporter? And that's why he was, that was why he was dismissed. Whereas the other parties, house. hang on, but the other parties, they, something similar, they'll suspend him. We've, we've just said that's inappropriate fire. Had Mr. Greenhuff drunk the whole bottle when he said the only solution is remove the Muslims from our terrorists, uh, from our territory or that Ashkenazi and, Jews and have caused w- the world massive misery. And he was removed immediately. So that's the whole point. And look, so are well, they drunk well, or well, racist? Which is it? Uh, th- those are racist comments. Uh, but the point is that you do deal with people immediately if they s- think, say... Uh, and write inappropriate things, and that's what that's that's the reality, and that's what we're doing. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, uh, other parties have got the same thing. We've got anti-Semitism in the Workers' Party that uh, has been discovered by the Telegraph. That hope not hate surprisingly didn't discover. Interesting that. that, that that's Galloway's party, is it? That's Galloway's talking? party. Yes. Um, when was the last time you spoke to Dominic Cummings? A very good question. I should think it's probably five or six years ago. You haven't spoken to him since. Not to my recollection, no. I'm sure I haven't. What do you mean you're sure you haven't? I don't think I've spoken to Dominic. And No, actually, it's even longer than that. I think it's probably back in 17 or 18. Why, have you got other information? He's very, you, in, he's very you, interested. Have you got AI information that he's, I've been talking to him in my brain? He's very interested in starting a new party. He's talking about a new political movement. I just wondered whether you had had any conversations with him about none how that all. might work. Absolutely none at all. I mean, if he wants to ring me up and get some advice, I'll tell him just how hard it is. And if he thinks he can get to 16% in three years like we've done, well, good luck, Dominic. Which other Tory MPs are coming over to you? Well, of course, uh, those who uh, who we think share our, our principles and values and policies, uh, they're very welcome. They've got my number. But as I say to everybody, Tom, uh, I'm not going to give any names or confirmations about meetings. But I think it's fair to say that I will be surprised if there's not more than uh, one more or more before the general election. Let me put it like that. Nigel Farage, who is involved with reform. He's the honorary president. That's right. Has talked today about needing a referendum on the ECHR. Is that going to be a policy of yours? Oh, actually, I mean, our policy is is that we should leave the ECHR. Then you need a referendum. The, uh, well, in a sense, the, the thing about referendums is, I mean, the Prime Minister said he didn't want a referendum on the ECHR. He said mm-hmm. he didn't want a referendum on net zero after the ridiculous ruling by the ECHR yesterday uh, with regard to the uh, the claim from uh, from Switzerland um, I think that's reinforced to people that actually we should be we should be ruled by our own elected representatives making decisions uh, on behalf of uh, the people who've put them into uh, I- into our parliament uh, not by some overseas judges so as a serious alternative if you leave the ECHR what do you do about the good friday agreement which uh, I'm very glad you asked that, actually, depends. because um, the Good Friday Agreement says that Stormont, with regard to Northern Ireland legislation made in Stormont, must take account of rulings from the ECHR. It doesn't say that the United Kingdom has to be a member of the ECHR, and there's a very significant difference. So the United Kingdom can leave the ECHR, but Stormont can still take account, in compliance with the Good Friday Agreement, of rulings by the ECHR just about legislation introduced in Stormont. So what is, in what sense have we then left if a part of the United Kingdom still takes its guidance from a, quotes foreign court? Uh, because um, that, is, that is the requirement of the Good Friday Agreement. But the United Kingdom can leave, right, the European Convention on well, Human Rights. it's not the United rights. Kingdom. <clears throat> it is the United no, Kingdom. No, because Northern no. Ireland needs to be underpinned by the Good Friday... No. The Good Friday Agreement the is United by Kingdom the ECHR, which you the say ECHR. can, no, hang on. can still on. have a ruling. There's, there's a very Ireland. clear, distinct difference, which is that the Good Friday Agreement says that Stormont-produced legislation uh, can be subject to rulings by the ECHR, mm. but the United Kingdom can still leave the European Convention of Human Rights. So the two actually this is are the compatible. Customs Union again. No, it's this not. is like the Customs Union again. We're out, but, but we're not quite out because part of the United Kingdom isn't out fully yet. So the so the Good Friday Agreement would stand underpinned by the ECHR, an organisation that apparently the United Kingdom had left yet had left Northern Ireland in it to be uh, to to. No, it to, leaves it leaves Northern Ireland uh, with its legislation subject to rulings on legislation that Stormont has produced, mm-hmm. subject to those rulings. That is perfectly compatible. That is compliant with the Good Friday Agreement, and yet the United Kingdom can leave as a member from the why European Convention on Human Rights. Why would you not want a referendum on it? Why, sorry, why, why would you not want a referendum on it? 
Um, I, I'd like to leave, but I mean, if we have a referendum, I'm convinced we'd win it. I have no problem with a referendum. I'd be quite happy with a referendum. Bring it on. We're so quite you, good at referendums. We win them. You do it. You you put it in as a reform plan. If we if we get in or we get significant, well, we we'll campaign in, for a in, referendum. In our draft contract, which is on our website, it's a very fine document. I urge people to read it. Uh, you know, our plan, our suggestion is that we should leave the ECHR. I think it's uh, I think it's it's wrong that we're a member. We don't need to be. Many other great successful nations all over the world, uh, they don't need to be a member of the ECHR. To, uh, to have very fine human rights, and nor do we. Good to speak to you. Good to speak to you. Thanks for coming in. I'll, we'll see about that, Guinness. Richard Tice, leader of Reform UK. Is that a party you believe is a, quote, serious alternative?